I am here with Melanie O'Kane, candidate for Kenmore position number, is it number one or no? Number one, yeah, position number one. All right. And um, Melanie is uh, obviously a resident of Kenmore. And actually, how long have you been in Kenmore now? Well, I grew up here. Okay. I moved here, I think it was 78. Oh, wow. When I was in third okay. grade. So you're like... But it's a little bit more to the story. Than oh, okay. okay. So I moved here in 1978 with my family in third grade. Wow. Went to Arrowhead Elementary, mm -hmm. then went to North Shore Junior High and Inglemore High School. Nice. And then I went to Utah. Mm -hmm. Kind of went back and forth with my parents a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That. And then um, lived in Seattle most of my adult life. Okay. And about five years ago, um, got divorced mm -hmm. and uh, rented an apartment next to my kid's school mm -hmm. and ended up getting priced out of it. And when that happened, you know, I thought, you know, well, actually, when my rent was increased, is really the way it happened. When my rent was increased three times in 19 months, yeah. um, I called my friend and I said, hey, you know, I can't live like this. I can't live at will of my landlord anymore. Mm -hmm. Run my numbers. Let's see if I can buy a house. And I really didn't think I could. Mm -hmm. But I got lucky. My numbers came in good. I qualified for an FHA loan for, you know, divorce wow. exemption. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Yep. And um, anyway, the, this is actually the second house I saw online. I saw it. Wow. Yeah, I, I kid you not. This is the second house I saw online. And it had this Nelson saucer lamp, mm -hmm. which I had put in my home, in my home that I, you know, oh, that my yeah. ex husband I had remodeled. Right. And I saw that and I went, this could be it. <laughs> and then it also had the cedar plank ceiling, mm -hmm. which I've always wanted. And I love mid-century. It's and classic mid-century. This is just awesome. Yeah, it's just a sweet yeah. house. And I would actually, my parents live out in Maltby now. Okay. And I drive from Magnuson Park down 522 out mm -hmm. to visit my parents. And every time I look right up, I live off 61st. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know that, but maybe the people watching don't. And I'd look up the street and I'd go, it'd be nice to live out here. Right. Yeah, you know, I'd think it. And somehow the pieces came together, and I landed here, back in Kenmore, three mm. years ago. Wow. And well, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So what was it about your journey back that, um, I guess, brought you to the place where you decided to become a candidate for city council? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, it's kind of a little thing. So it kind of started with... Um, I've been doing a lot of just personal work, trying to find what was important to me, what right. the meaning of life is for me, mm -hmm. how I want to be in the world. So I've kind of been doing that for several years. And then, um, as I moved in, really amazing things happened. The weekend I moved in, my neighbors came over, a group of six of them. Mm -hmm. They brought champagne, flowers, had an ice cream social for me and my kids. I went. Wow, this is this is really amazing. You're back. I'm back. I'm welcomed. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was an interesting time too because I had just turned 48. Mm -hmm. It was 30 years from graduating from high school, and oh, it just yeah. felt like perfect time for a fresh start. Nice. And so there's little things like that would happen, and then I would drive through Kenmore, and I'd look and I'd see the lead certified buildings, town hall. Mm -hmm. The amazing fire station. I saw what they were doing where um, the hangar and seaplane are in the mm -hmm. town square, and I thought, wow, you know, this is really cool stuff. And they're doing things I really believe in. Yeah. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, I just did it to myself that maybe I should run for city council. <laughs> and I guess exactly. That's an interesting <laughs> conversation with yourself. <laughs> I was, maybe I should check it out. So I Googled and I looked at Kenmore the city of Kenmore site and I saw they had a um, meeting coming up and it was one of their legislative meetings. Maybe it took me a couple months before I got there. Right. And I remember Jess and Farrell was there and I went to the town hall or, you know, to the council meeting and um, I sat in that room and I thought, wow, this feels really good. Hmm. I think this might be something I have to do. And then, you know, I told my friends and family, set the intention. Mm -hmm. And the funny, then, not the funniest thing, just kind of reality happened. Work, kids, got a little scared. 
life and all? Yeah, yeah. And I'd never done it before. So sure. I thought, you know, how would I do this? I didn't even know where to begin. So I kind of let it go. Um, then, you know, and I've worked for, and I can say, I'll go, maybe I could go into my career a little bit. Sure, I've absolutely. I've worked for Seattle for 19 years. Okay. So I've got some public service experience there. And I can talk about that more. But I'll just go back to the story. So three years later, I'm at a party for um, friends of mine. There were twins from our graduating, my graduating mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine at the party came, walked right up to me and was talking to him and his wife. And he said, so Melanie, do you know any strong candidates for city council? <laughs> well, all right, good. <laughs> I'm like, Funny you might ask. I, I thought about it, but you know, I, I, don't have to, I don't even know where to begin. And he goes, well, we should talk. Wow. Yeah, and I thought, oh, okay, well, we should. And then a couple weeks later, my neighbor across the street, someone I told that I was interested in doing this, she goes, so Melanie, are you interested in running for city council? Yeah. I'm like, well, I thought about it. This is you're the second person who's asked me about this. Mm -hmm. I said, well, maybe I should explore this. And so mm -hmm. the ball got rolling from there. If the universe and, was trying to tell you something. Yeah, and I was like this, well, I want to. No, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that. And so, um, what finally happened was the two people who had strongly encouraged me to run um, gave me a call one day about uh, two weeks before the filing deadline, and they said, "Hey, we really think you should run." Hmm. And I looked at that, and I'm sitting at my desk at work, and just like you said, the universe said, "How many times is the universe going to just offer something up that you yeah. have set your intention to do?" Right. And it's just falling right here. And I thought, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to take the leap. I'm going to jump in and, and run for council. And signed up for a candidate boot camp, emerged candidate boot camp, which was the weekend before the filing date. And I just said, okay. <laughs> here we go. I'm jumping in. <laughs> I'm going to make this happen. And one of the coolest things about it, um, and why one of the things I do want to do as a council member Mm -hmm. Just make sure that people in Kenmore know how welcome they are, how, how important their voices are, and how mm -hmm. supported they are when they come forward. Oh, and that's yeah. what's happened to me since running. Mm -hmm. The light in my kids' eyes are my parents, my friends and family, and they've been like, Melanie, we're so glad you're doing this. Mm -hmm. You are absolutely doing the right thing. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you really see that in me, <laughs> right? Yeah. You see me as this person right, that absolutely. should be on the council. And I was like, wow, you know, this, and for me, I'm finally feeling like I'm swimming in the right lane. Finding your path there. Yeah. Okay. So there's that story there. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot about me finally having trust in my voice right. and what I can offer. Mm -hmm. And then having people reflect it back at me that... They want to hear me. Yeah. I know. I mean, or, and that they trust that I'm representing them, right? right. I mean, right. there's, there's, there's a combination. But is, is it interesting how that sometimes works when you, you know, you kind of, you resist for a little while, <laughs> and you, you're like, I don't know, and then all of a sudden, the skies part, and and it feels like, oh, I am in the right place. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's 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 been my experience. Yeah. And, it's, and that's been my experience since moving back to Kenmore. Hmm. Little, little nice stories. I call it my can. can this is a little corny, but I call it my Kenmore magic story. Like yeah. little things just keep happening and falling into place hmm. in the right way. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, so you started kind of mentioning about your experience with this, the Port of Seattle. Yeah. Um, what you were there for a very long time. Yeah. And I'm still there. So. And you're still there. And so, what what has your experience been? Kind of what what's your path been there with the with the port? Yeah. Well, I started um, I started as an administrative assistant mm -hmm. at Fisherman's Terminal in our port construction services department. Mm -hmm. And then um, about I want to say 12 years ago, uh, moved down to Pier 69. And I'm their records and administration manager. Okay. I oversee the accounting, financial reporting, budget, as well as um, you know records management, public disclosure requests. I work with auditors. Oh, um, okay. One of the really important things working for the Port of Seattle, in particular in the accounting department, is authenticity, integrity, mm -hmm. um, accuracy, transparency. Right. right. Transparency. 
in yeah. government, and that's that's something that I can bring to the council. Course. Sure, yeah, that's that's really wonderful. Now, how do you see that? Um, I guess what what do you see as the the way that's going to shape your candidacy and you know hopeful uh, position on the council? What what do you how is that going to inform that? Yeah. Well, it was an interesting thing. I don't know if you've seen my flyer, but um, the core values that I'm running on are environmental stewardship, mm -hmm. sustainable development, community, and equity. Mm -hmm. And it was funny. I spent all this time really thinking, what, what are these three things that are so important to me that I want to make sure people know? Right. And it was funny when I realized, I was talking to someone a couple weeks ago, and I didn't even realize I'd done it. After 19 years at the Port of Seattle, I come up with a mission that's really in alignment with a lot of the things that the port is number one in. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And oh. so, you know, I'm grounded in these values and principles. Right. And the Port of Seattle is a, you know, it's the economic engine for our region. Right. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a big responsibility. That those, that mindset, you know, understanding, um, the regional issues mm -hmm. is really important in Kenmore. And a lot of the big things that I hear people talk about when I'm doorbelling, mm -hmm. traffic, it's a regional yeah. issue. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, homelessness. Mm -hmm. People are concerned about We're fortunate not to have such an issue here, but people are concerned it might happen here. Sure. For good reason. It's, yeah. a, it's a legitimate concern. Again, that's a regional issue. Mm -hmm. And so having a mindset about our community, understanding what our community's needs, mm -hmm. being able to advocate for what the people here are asking for, right. working with our neighboring communities like Forest Park, Shoreline, Bothell, Kirkland, and Woodenville. Right. Um, also, being able to work with um, our King County Council and state legislators, um, you know, having those relationships. Mm -hmm. you bet. And you know, the Port of Seattle has, um, you know, given Kenmore grants for the business incubator, right? Oh, yeah. Right? So there are relationships all over the place and making sure that we're able to, we have representatives that are reaching beyond just Kenmore. Right? Yeah, absolutely. To get the funding and the things that we need right. done. Well, I mean, we have a, a unique yeah. place here at the north end of the lake. Mm -hmm. Um, which it's interesting, you mentioned the incubator. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a really nice business community. I mean, you know, I, I try to attend the monthly meetings of the Kimmore Business Group yeah. and go to the council meetings, or excuse me, the council meetings and the, and the Chamber of Commerce meetings. Mm -hmm. And it's really been interesting to see how energized the community is here mm -hmm. around all of the ideas that we have kind of swirling here at the north end of the lake. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some of the things haven't always come together, like, for instance, Lake Point. Right. That's one that, you know, again, it seems to have kind of gone away. And I think there's maybe another vi uh, another vision emerging for that. And I'd be really curious to hear what you might have thoughts on that about. Yeah, I do have thoughts on Lake Point. Yeah. Um, yeah, as, as someone who spent a good chunk of her life here, um, right. when I was a kid, we used to look at Lake Point and go, why and I don't want to be Kirkland. I want to be clear about that. But right. What, this is what we say. Why are we more like Kirkland? We can be the next Kirkland. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, why? Why do we have this beautiful waterfront that isn't just beautiful, lying isn't, dormant there? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we recognize it's a complex thing. And mm -hmm. Lake Point's built on landfill. Right. It's not. It, we the city doesn't own it. A property owner. You know. It's, right. It's private yeah. property. So, mm -hmm. how do we? Um, work with the property owner and find a good way to transition that. Mm -hmm. There are all sorts of ideas. Um, one of my favorites, and this is just, and I, I haven't explored it too deeply, right. but one of my favorite ideas is, um, you know, restoring a good chunk of it, you know, so it's waterfront park access. Mm -hmm. I also like the idea of putting ball fields there, mm. like okay. making it a community center. Right. Having it have, um, and it's in such a cool location. It's central. You know, mm -hmm. It's right between North and South Kenmore. You bet. 
um, it's a really nice access point for that. I think mm -hmm. there might need to be some you know, design and engineering for traffic concerns that would be going on there. So, <laughs> yeah. um, That's a whole other kettle of fish. Let's just it? say, if we were to look at it, yeah. I, would love, I would love to have a community space there. Right. Maybe have, you know, have some retail, have some restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's an approach that I, I'd like to see. Some apartments, yeah. too. But mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how much we can fit on that 60-acre property, but let's maximize it and make it beautiful. Right. And make it something we all can use. So actually, that maybe brings up another point or a question. Um, when you're looking around the lake mm -hmm. at various communities, are there, besides uh, Kirkland, are there other models that you see that we might be able to pull from in order to create that, the, the vision that you just mentioned for Lake Point. For Lake Point, um, I mean, I think Renton has done some tremendous work. I mean, that's mm -hmm. on a much grander scale sure. than what we are here. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I, I have a, actually a slightly different way of wanting to go about it. And I'm just mm -hmm. starting to explore it and get excited about it. And it's the Strong Towns philosophy. Okay. Um, Charles Marone, he was just at City Hall. Um, I think two weeks ago mm -hmm. on a Thursday, and it was a full house. Um, Bothell has a group called Bow Pop, and it's Bothell, uh, people-oriented places. Bothell oh, yeah. people-oriented places. That's the name of the group. Mm -hmm. So they call it Bow Pop. <laughs> it's kind of a cool thing. And I'm friends with Carrie Westerbeck, who's mm -hmm. the founder of the group. Okay. And um, we've been talking, and I've been following his stuff before Strong Towns came here. Mm -hmm. um, but um, with uh, Carrie was on a podcast recently for Strong Can Strong Towns. Mm -hmm. Charles Moran came here. I went to the um, council meeting. I saw the interest and excitement in that, right. and I thought, you know what? This is a grassroots, community-based. It's an incremental community-based movement for yeah. sustainable development based on history and human psychology. Hmm. Like what really works. Oh, it's a it's an incredible theory. It makes so much sense. Sometimes you look at something or you learn something for the first time and you just you know, yeah. that makes sense. I so, understand it. So for the people that maybe haven't had exposure to that concept, is can you kind of boil it down a little bit? Well, what it is, and where I, why, why I bring it up for Kenmore, is, you know, we do have our town center, mm -hmm. and we have Brewery Row. Right. Brewery Row is kind of strong town's approach. Something popped up. Oh, Something yeah. Something came next to it. I just had a conversation a with Jen Boyd about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think right. it's, it's fabulous the way, you know, we're kind of adopting a little of that sort of European sensibility mm -hmm. of, you know, businesses are part of the community. Mm -hmm. and making them kind of central to the experience is, I think, a wonderful idea. Yeah, it's exact, It's really important. Mm -hmm. And as a council member, having the view of what is it that we can do as a city, as a city council, to support our small businesses yeah. and open doors. Mm -hmm. and I know to open 192, we opened doors. We, yeah. It was a little bit special what happened right. creating that space. and. I'm open to that, and we all mm. take such pride in Brewery Row now. Yeah. And I can add to it. You know, maybe there's, I love the idea of creating, um, I call it a arts, what was it, arts district. But, you know, maybe something mm -hmm. along that Burt Gilman oh, Trail yeah. area tied yeah. into Brewery Row, looking at that, and what I've seen, and I think of maybe Pioneer Square or Ballard in Seattle, mm -hmm. these areas where you know, they were affordable. Artists moved there, right? They came in, yep. they did their cool stuff. And art, Kenmore, I think of as an artistic, kind of edgy community. It always has been unique. There's a, uh, yeah, I'll just use the word edge. It, it's got a little grit to it. Yeah, a little grit. Yeah. Creativity. Mm -hmm. um, not, not necessarily preppy or, I'm trying to think of this word that yeah. we're not necessarily I don't want to say not necessarily rule followers, <laughs> but we're thinkers. Right. We're creative people. Yeah. And that idea of we have the kind of community that can support this. And what could we do mm -hmm. in Kenmore that's different than Woodenville, that's different than Bothell? Mm -hmm. That people maybe coming from Seattle through here on their way to you know the new hotel at St. Anne's or going out to Woodenville mm -hmm. for wine, 
Why, why are they going to stop here? What, what is it? Maybe it's our arts community. Maybe we create an arts district. Yeah. I mean, I just think it'd be so cool. And I was an art major. I studied <laughs> art, so I've got a little bit of a bias. So I think artists are really amazing. Oh, um, okay, well, but, but there's common ground there. <laughs> so, you know, those are ideas. But mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a council that makes that happen, right? right? It's the community. What do the people of this community want? And what can we as a council do to open the door to make it happen? Right. What kind of conversations have you been having around that? When you've been out doing your community doorbelling and kind of, you know, getting to introduce people to your candidacy, what kind of conversations come out of that? They tend, they tend to be uplifting, good conversations. People, mm -hmm. you know, they get the sparkle in their eye. They're like, yes, yeah. you know, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. And the additional thing with Strong Towns, this idea, it's environmentally sound. Mm -hmm. You're not overbuilding. Right. You're building to the needs of the community. Right. And that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting being in a position of representing your community and you know developing the relationships that allow you to to do that effectively. Mm -hmm. And how are you um, how are you finding kind of the the voice that you want to express from all of the various voices that you're hearing? How, how is that kind of being condensed into something that you can project out into the world? Right. That's a good question. How am I synthesizing what I'm hearing mm -hmm. and listening, projecting the values of the community? Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm first sent, I'm checking in to make sure that I'm making sense. Yeah, no, right? absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so when I speak with people and I say, well, environmental stewardship is, you know, my, our paramount duty today. Right. So I, I leave with that. Okay. I do, because I, do, I know climate change. It's climate crisis, right? Yeah. We're, we're living in a time where, um, anyway, I, I do think decisions about our environment need to be made with with that in mind. Right. Human-induced climate change and habitat destruction. We are responsible for a lot. Yeah. And it's our responsibility to be custodians, stewards of mm -hmm. our environment. Yeah, and absolutely. here in Kenmore, mm -hmm. we have more parks and wetlands and water, you know, oh, waterfront yeah. than just about anywhere in the Northwest even. I mean, we have a mm -hmm. really high I think our land dedicated to natural spaces, open spaces, is higher hmm. than, um, than most communities around hmm. Lake Washington. It is the highest, is what one person told me, but I haven't fact checked that. Yeah. But I, I look around and I think there's probably a lot of truth to it, especially given we have seen that. Sure. Um, but when I lead with that, most people nod their head and they're like, yeah. And yeah. I say, well, I'm going to be making decisions with this in mind. Mm -hmm. And sustainable development. There are a couple things that go with sustainable development, right? There's sustainable business development. What's going to take to have a business last year, 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 and be right. in the community, right? Absolutely. There's also, well, how do we make it sustainable? We have to be stewards of our environment too, right? And protect yep. what we have mm -hmm. and have sustainable businesses. And what can we do um, when it's sustainable bu building and housing? What, what can we do maybe to um, provide incentives for? Things like solar panels on houses or mm -hmm. um, heat pumps and other forms of heating systems that are more environmentally friendly, right? Mm -hmm. right? So that's, those are things in sustainable development. So I talk about this stuff. And then mm -hmm. I talk about community and equity, right? And I think all three of these items, they're interwoven, right? Mm -hmm. um, in order for us to be stewards of the environment, it can't be just one city council member or two. Right. And it, it can't even be an entire council. It takes a community to say, this is important to us. We right. want to be models for the region when it comes to this. Models for Lake Washington. We have a blank slate here. I mean, we have, it's not a blank slate. We have conditions and things that we have to work with as we're developing Kenmore. But the door is somewhat open. We're a newly incorporated city, 21 years, right? Yeah, I, I was just talking to, with Jen about that. We're now legal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, and what's funny is I, I lived in what was called was unincorporated Bothell up in Inglewood Hills when I was a kid. I always wanted to be Kenmore. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, 
still want to be Bothell. I want to be Kenmore. Yeah. Um, but so I talk about that stuff, and people share their ideas and thoughts about it. Mm-hmm. And when I'm that, when it, and in general, people validate that these are concerns mm-hmm. of our community. They're things right. they want. Right. And what is it that we can do to make sure that, and I think we have a very engaged community already. I think people are pretty active and involved here. It's I would agree. And I think that one, of the things that I, one of the things that actually speaks to that is kind of what we've got going with our, the downtown center down here. Yeah. I mean, the, the hangar and, you know, what they've done with Kenmore Camera and the, the growing little city center mm-hmm. that, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like the kernel of something good. Yeah. And I think you're right, though. I think that being very careful about the stewardship of that mm-hmm. because I one of the one of the things that I have heard on a few occasions is that, you know concerns that come up are our parks and sidewalks and safe streets. Yep. So speak to that's that. That's what everyone talks about. Exactly. Yeah, that's like, I would say it's like a theme. I know I, I would say nine out of ten doors sidewalks come up. They, mm-hmm. When when people are willing to talk about what their issue is, yeah. well, sidewalks. Yeah. yeah. Like, I hear you. Yeah. And I'm walking them, right? I'm walking yeah. the sidewalks. I walked along, um, I think it's 66 the other day, mm-hmm. down towards Kenmore Middle School. And I was like, this is so dangerous. Oh, yeah. I'm glad our city's working on it, and I want to continue working on it and expanding it. Um, A neighborhood that really needs sidewalks, and it's really more complex, is along 55th, Mm -hmm. um, because it's the Lake Forest Park Camel border. Right. And so, how do we work with Lake Forest Park, maybe, to get something going Mm -hmm. there? Because I walked along there. The cars are going fast. There's not much sidewalk there. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I thought, gosh, and then there's a park nearby. And parents want to take their kids there. Exactly. Or they want their kids to be able to walk to school. How, how do we make it safer? Right. And it means investing in sidewalks and mm-hmm. safer ways for people to get around and bike, you know, bike lanes. People, of course, want bike safety too. Absolutely. Something that comes up too is um, bike safety comes up quite a bit. Yeah. Actually. Yep. Um, yeah. So. And parks. People care about our parks. It's, it's huge. It, it's There's a, a lot of what we live here. It's beautiful. Well, absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting. We have, you mentioned we have so much park space relative to many other communities. Yeah. And yet, that's still a focus. That's something that we're all really concerned about. Yeah. And what about those ecosystems that are there? Right. Yeah. And we protect them. Absolutely. And really, I, I kind of philosophically anyway, want to work with, and as we're developing, looking at what's already built, right? Mm -hmm. Or where there's already concrete poured. Let's start there. Yeah. Let's do our best to avoid encroaching on these natural spaces. Right. We need to protect our trees. And we know what the studies say, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. our air. We need our trees. Right. And old growth trees are better for us than new growth. You know, you can cut down a tree and plant a new one, but you're not going to get the same benefits. Yeah. So, you know, we yeah. need to protect our trees. Your voice yeah. matters. You're, you're, you will look out for the best interest of the community. Very nice. Yeah. That's actually probably a good place to tie it up. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad with that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Melanie. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. Are, are there any last words you'd like to leave folks with? Anything um, left uncovered? Well, um, Please feel free to check out my website, MelanieOkane.com. I'm on Facebook, Melanie, I think Melanie O'Kane for Kenmore on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, feel free to email me, reach out. I do care. I am trying to knock on as many doors as possible. But as I've said about, I don't know, 30, 40 times, your voices matter. I want to be representing you. So um, please, I'd love to earn your vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>